Middle Woman Chapter 41 As Goethe, when he had a joy or a grief, put it into a song, so Larry resolved to embalm and to compose a requiem which should harrow up Joe's soul and melt the heart of every hearer. Goethe's Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship is a story about self-realization. The story centers around Wilhelm, who wants to escape empty, mundane Burgess life of a businessman. After a failed romance, he joins into a theater company. In Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship and in many Goethe's works in general, have elements from Shakespeare's plays. In fact, in the novel's dialogue, there is a great deal of discussion about Shakespeare's work, and Wilhelm's theater group also performs a production of Hamlet, where Wilhelm plays the lead. Theater world is filled with seductions, love affairs, and scandals. The more Wilhelm sees it, the more he dislikes it, and he realizes that he is not fitting for this type of lifestyle. What Wilhelm really needs is to figure out who he is, what he wants from life, and how he should live. Both Werther and Wilhelm can be seen as failed genius. They are sensitive and artistic, but they are not creatively productive enough. Larry, in this case, is more similar to Wilhelm, because unlike Werther, Larry goes through the process of self-discovery, and like Wilhelm, Larry also becomes a husband and a father, which brings long-desired purpose to his life, and contributing member of the society, which is not something he was before. Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship introduces the character of Mignon. Mignon was kidnapped as a child by bandits, and Wilhelm saves her. They tour the country together with the theater group, go to picnics, flirt and joke with each other. Mignon has a constant longing to her homeland, Italy. She falls in love with Wilhelm, but he is in love with someone else. Eventually Mignon dies for longing, a common theme in Goethe's works. In Wilhelm Meister's apprenticeship, there is also an important character called Friedrich, and one of the female characters also likes to cross-dress, same way as Joe does. It's genius shimmering, perhaps. I let it simmer and see what comes of it, he said, with a secret suspicion all the while that it was ingenious, but something far more common. Whatever it was, it simmered to some purpose, for he grew more and more discontent with his desultory life, began to long for some real and earnest work to go at, soul and body, and finally came to the wise conclusion that everyone who loved music was not a composer. Returning from one of Mozart's grand operas, splendidly performed at the Royal Theatre. He looked over his own, played a few of the best parts, sat staring at the bust of Mendelssohn, Beethoven and Bach, who stared beningly back again. Then suddenly he tore up his music sheets, one by one, and as the last fluttered out of his hand, he said soberly to himself, She's right, talent is ingenious, and you can't make it so. That music has taken the vanity out of me as Rome took it out of her and I won't be a humbug any longer. Now, what shall I do? The purest form of love is to love the full reality of the other person. She did not hear him cross the courtyard beyond, nor see him pause in the archway that led from the subterranean path into the garden. He stood a minute looking at her with new eyes, seeing what no one had ever seen before, the tender side of Amy's character. Everything about her mutely suggested love and sorrow, the blotted letters in her lap, the black ribbon that tied up her hair, the womanly pain and patience in her face. Even the little ebony cross at her throat seemed pathetic to Laurie, for he had given it to her, and she wore it as her only ornament. If he had any doubts about the reception she would give him, they were set at rest the minute she looked up and saw him, for dropping everything, she ran to him, exclaiming in a tone of unmistakable love and longing, is it possible that anyone who has not been happy with the books have been looking both Laurie and Friedrich and Joe from completely wrong perspective? Throughout his many works, Goethe stresses love as the foundation of relationships. And he did so living in a culture where marriage matters were typically determined by economic factors. It was a radical position to take. The difference between you love me with an explanation point, and you love me with a question mark. The substitution of a question mark for exclamation point changes the meaning completely. There is a fine line between love and obsession, 
and the philosophical and psychological exploration of the two is a common theme in Louisa May Alcott's literal works. A year before Louisa wrote Little Woman, she had a fling with a young man called Ladislas Wisniewski, a young Polish composer. He was ten years younger than Louisa, and one of the mothers for Laurie. Louisa describes Ladislas as, as a charming prankster, and apparently at some point even considered a future with him. But Louisa's letters reveal that she finds Ladislas quite immature and irresponsible. A year after the publication of Little Woman, Lisa wrote an article called Happy Woman, where she says that one should only marry for love, and any other imitation of love is only a shadow. Louisa often drew from her real-life experiences and wrote them to her stories. If you ask me why Cho rejected Laurie, the answer is pretty simple. Laurie is based on Ladislas Wisniewski and Alf Whitman. Louisa loved Alf like a brother. Louisa was very lonely when she met Ladislas. She liked to hang out with him, but then realized that she didn't truly really love him. Remaining notes of Louisa's own romantic encounters and her intense need to protect her reputation does suggest that she put lots of thought and consideration to the true nature of love. Louisa May Alcott also lived during a time period when romantic love became the basis of marriage, when before that, Marriage was based on economical factors, and in all her novels, Louisa promotes the idea of marriage based on love. When reading Louisa's journals, we find out that Louisa loved philosopher Henry Thoreau. Henry passed away when Louisa was 28, and Henry was 44. It is possible that this is the reason why Louisa never married, because Henry was her soulmate. And anyone who has ever been in love knows that soulmates are not so easy to find. Later in life, Louisa wrote in her journals that she believed that she was going to reunite with her soulmate in her next life. Interestingly, in Little Woman, Jo and Friedrich marry when Jo is 28 and Friedrich is 44. All Alcott sisters wanted to marry for love, and both Louisa and her sister May sometimes found it very difficult. Both being working women, it wasn't that easy for them to find love in the world where financial stability was seen more important than personal happiness. Louisa wrote Cho the happy ending she had wished for herself. Thank you for listening. Stay well and make good choices. Thank you for listening. Link to the full episode Why Cho Rejected Lori is in the description. You can listen to Little Woman Podcast on iHeartRadio, Spotify and other major podcast platforms. Take care and make good choices.